and welcome to another Lord of the Rings Rise to War video. I'm the player who plays as the King Under the Mountain and today we're going to do a little bit of a season review video or sort of update video but I'm conscious I've done one of those the last two days and not too much has changed but today's one I want to go more into uh, my formation for the season so far and, and how I've kind of changed it, got frustrated with things how certain things are working, how things aren't. Um, probably put a lot of attention into Shadow, I'm guessing. Well, probably what I'll do, because um, I've been really enjoying using him. So just to try and talk through those things, maybe go through some of his skills and, and, and the like and that kind of stuff. So As yesterday, really, not much has greatly changed. This is the map. Kingdoms are still the same. Um, Arthur and Odin are this green kingdom here. Uh, this is our kingdom, which is Kilt and honk which we uh still doby but we've renamed itself kilt for this season so uh you've got the avalon and meow kingdom here you've still got the ibis and echo kingdom here and then you've still got up here you've got gome raw and then a little bit of smee i don't know what they're doing in there but um and then this top corner you've got mad mesh and spot going at it up there as well which is quite interesting pins are still looking pretty spicy uh, this one's grown a lot since yesterday, actually. So 15.6 and 4.5 million deaths. Pretty big pin. Um, Ibis are also fighting us here. This pin here probably explains why we've been able to push forward a little bit today. Um, so sort of a 3.4 million pin there. This pin, again, is moving around between uh, Honk, Otter, and Odin. Um, but the main part of the pin is there. There is a tiny, tiny little bit of kilt there, but not, not a great deal. So the... Basically, uh, Honk are currently trying to engage Arthur and Odin. We are currently trying to engage Ibis and Echo. And then in the south, we're also trying to engage Iv Avalyn and Meow, who have taken this keep, I think, yesterday. Um, so that's quite interesting. So we'll, we'll see what sort of happens there. But they've kind of got a little bit closer to Gorgoroth. So um, hindsight probably suggests we probably should have took Minas Morgul. But there you go. Anyway, that's, that's a different... Um, Different scenario. Oh, so the ring isn't open. The central passes are open. We've taken ours. Odin and Arta have taken theirs. Uh, this pass here is currently unclaimed. I think if we were to zoom in there, though, there is some bases here from Ibis, High Mel, um, and there is a Echo. Um, interestingly, if that plays does come from STC, that'd be cool. STCC, that'd be cool. We used to play over them a couple of times. Um, so the fortress is here. They are probably looking at doing that, and we've we've moved a few forts to defend um, at this stage. So that's kind of the map and the kingdoms. Leaderboards again haven't really changed much since yesterday. Um, although Donut's obviously gone off and got some more tiles from somewhere because he's gone back above Raven. I'm still in fourth. Um, that's kind of we'll go briefly through the top fifty. And there's a lot of mix, to be honest. There's some Odin, Ibis, Honk. A um, bit of us in there as Kill. A uh, bit of Echo. I think also there's some Mesh in there somewhere. So, yeah, it's quite an interesting one. Merit-wise, we're back up into 10th, thankfully. Um, we've been hitting pretty hard today, to be fair. So it'll be quite interesting to... I'm just going to have a quick look at some of those reports, because... Um, Basically today, I've spent the day getting fat um, is probably the key with the fights that seemingly have happened. So uh, I've been fighting a lot of donuts and trying to eat a lot of donuts. So i just probably talk through those though at some point. Fellowship production wise, we're still the top two. Um, like I say, there isn't that much disparity between the kingdoms and we are fighting a couple of kingdoms now. So thankfully, it seems that at the moment, Raw and... Um, and sort of the like up there, uh, Gome are, are still kind of pushing Ibis, which is which is helping us at this stage. Contribution wise, we are currently in seventh. Uh, I would probably expect that to go up a little bit further, mainly due to the fact that I spent five or six days not really contributing because I was just sat on fellowship fort. So, and levels wise, we're still a little bit behind. We've caught up a bit, but not not too much. So. There's some level 47s already on the server and 46s. So we're at 45s, which is probably about the average for now. Um, where I'm currently fighting is over here by this pass. 
the pass is under control of Ibis. We're just building a fell for um, probably try and get a few more players in more than anything because we've we've kind of been near the keep. So we took SAV last night. This is the pass from SAV. And uh, and today's activity has pretty much been cleaning all this land out from people. So people have done a good job today pushing. Um, I'm still employing the sort of three or four fort system full of troops in a close area. So I've got one here, one by the keep, uh, somewhere over here. Yep, and then I've got another one just down the road. So I've got three forts within a five, six minute reinforcement. So it saves me. I find a three or four fort system better than having a tactical fort because if a, if one of your forts get hit, so say if this fort dies, um, your, your entire area is gone. Whereas if you've got three or four forts, one, you can kind of use them like a tactical fort and you can refill from each one, no problem whatsoever. But you also have different options. If one of them gets taken down, you can come back to a different fort and you're, and you're not waiting to build. So I just prefer that method personally. Uh, but yeah, this was taken down late last night, I think it was. Um, pretty big keep. So after a day of fighting, that was that was quite impressive by us, I would, I would say, really. Um, just to highlight one fight that was pretty cool because I, I did enjoy this fight. So uh, this one here. Really like this guy's formation. As a fellow dwarf lord, really respect it. And if anyone got done over by uh, by the sort of changes to the 2.5 patch, this guy got probably done over one of the most because he built his formation and his gear around Falgin. I mean, it's a Z5 Falgin, right? And he built it around Frey and Scarred, which used to scale off commander defense. Now it's it scales off the command stat, which makes more sense. But before, his bonus was mega. So I imagine he probably had a, a Thrain's Guard that was around 60-odd percent, I would guess, maybe a little bit more. Uh, Unique's nice. It definitely takes a lot less damage. But yeah, his gear was, was set up, sadly, um, to counter, I would say, you know, with, with the previous setup. So he'll probably have to redo his pieces, which is, which is a bit of a shame. Also, as well, really nice Thorin. Z10 Thorin, who... Now, from, from the sort of reports we're seeing, he isn't putting out anywhere near because of this change to the, the King of the Mountain skill that he got into the bold. So he's good now at clearing White Council. He's quite good at sort of like keeping troops alive and things like that. But his skill trees now don't really support anything that's constructive, which is a real real shame for a, a Z10 Thorin, to be honest. He's also got a really nice Dane. Um, 272 attack Dane, full refine unique and he has a z8 gimli so he is definitely a dwarf lord he's also got a z2 um ori which is pretty cool and it's got i think it's got the full refined unique so um definitely a bit of a dwarf guy to be honest on our side in this fight um uh, we i would say we got lucky he wasn't full even though it was saying but we sort of in the b team run three dds and obviously the gear is good because it's sort of the leftovers of my... Well, it's my first set of gear, but I just switch them over. Um, Saru died early, I think, in this fight, I would guess. Because I didn't actually... Um, with switching gear to him, I didn't wait for his health to go back up, I wouldn't think. So Saru got hit early there. But I've been impressed with Falcon as a tank. I'm contemplating putting Witch King in for Gimli and leaving Bjorn in. Um... Mainly because I, I think without having the refined unique, uh, I find Bjorn to do more damage. I have dropped Bjorn to my B team at the moment, and I am running um, running Shadow, but I'll, I'll kind of go into that in a minute. So, Commander levels-wise, um, we, we're sat around, like I say, this 45, 44 mark, and then we've got quite a few around the sort of 40s or early 40s. I basically stopped playing Gil as soon as uh, PBE, stopped and then he turned into my siege kill um i nearly got tempted at one stage to run in with bow knights because i was just running into so many things and, and i think my main problem was that i was trying to run bjorn and, and dane together um and i wasn't clearing white council fast enough so my saruman's only respect 10 and I haven't, unless I use a few more hammers, I haven't really got three lots of focus equipment. So say if I was going to run, I'll, I'll show you from this screen, it's probably easier. So say if I was looking at running uh, Saruman, Dane, 
uh, Gandalf the White and, and Sauron, which uh, which has aptly been named, I know he listens in every now and again, uh, the law meta, which uh, the player law for those who know him from the community. A really nice guy, but he, he sort of coined the phrase, that was the law meta the other day, and I've not really let him uh, live it down since. It's nice to know he's defined his own meta, so... Um, but but I do agree, it's very good, and it's kind of taking my own version of that because of, of my gear. So I do have good pieces of equipment for Saruman, uh, but my issue is that if I want to run Gandalf the White with some focus, um, I can't really use those two pieces. And if I want to run Sauron, um, again, kind of as my tank, but I'd have to take the call off him, and I haven't really got another tank helmet. So even though I think the call would be quite good on uh, on Saruman, I'd need another focus chest. So I've just got to wait a little bit longer. Um, and if I can get this up, I, I should be able to kind of change that. If I don't wait to change that, I have got some options within these pieces that I could do. But my, my problem will then be my second formation, because I'm not really a big Skalhelm fan. I would, would probably then fall short because I'd have to use a focus chest on, on someone, which I suppose I could use it on Shadow, but... I don't know. At the moment, I, I need to figure that out. So at the moment, we're using Shadow, and he is at 232 attack, plus, I think, 10 from the ring, and then this 10 here. So he's got a decent level of attack. Um, nice bonus. So he, I, I've got the Perseverance set on 2, and I've got Sharp Blade on the other just to make sure that it's sort of topped up. Skill-wise, I've been running him with the Black Numenorean tree, and, and since having this tree full... Um, I've been I've been really impressed to be honest. So he's definitely got better since he leveled up, and I got I got this full. Next points will obviously go into here. Um, if I if if I could have him something like a Z8, I would be really happy and get him to something like that. But I think a Z8 Shadow would be disgustingly good. So I, I'm kind of running him with a bit of focus to get him up to about 120. I might do some further testing when we're not in such um, sort of a lot of fighting is what we're in now and I might try and run him with uh, with my two focus pieces of equipment and then change something to more attack or something on the on the chest maybe or something like that or maybe change the build slightly so I, I get um, more attack from the, the R2 so I, I'm going to have a little play around with that I think but I've, I've been really impressed with him over the last few days um, I'll just come down here and make sure I'm not being attacked yeah, that's good. I also need to build a four here at some stage. But I don't think I've got enough points yet. Oh, I now have enough points. Winning. I'll, I'll just... Uh, sorry, slight distraction. I'm just going to name my fort. T take this as a lesson in naming your fort. You need to delete all that out. And, uh, and you're right in. There you go. So that's now building. Happy days. I kind of had a bit of a go at everyone for not building enough forts. I love this, by the way. Nine forts in Southern Under and Undoing Vale. That's impressive. Um, and that's now all clean. Nice. So, as always, I've kind of made a, a sort of small folder for this. Um, and it's quite interesting because there's some... Uh, I, I found that if I fight gills with this shadow formation... so. Dane's still putting out a real nice amount of damage, and I found when I'd got Bjorn in this place and not Shadow, I found Dane was sort of doing a little bit less, maybe like a 120, and, and Bjorn was doing sort of a 105. And I think it was to do more with the fact that because of Gilgalad's skills, um, with this whole evasion mechanic, which can go into the third round, I, I wasn't really hitting fast enough to get through any White Council. So against people who had a genuinely... Uh, a good team i was really struggling so what this has kind of allowed me to achieve is that even though even though i'm not hitting uh with every attack when he is hitting he's shredding a lot of white council because the splash seems to hit for all, all the other um hits so if he hits Gilgalad himself the splash seems to hit as well so i am taking away some white council in the early rounds with his jewel blows and then uh, the Undertaker, and then obviously on top, Black Numenorian. So it's a similar s sort of thing to why people use Saruman with the um, with the Respect Zero skill to sort of crunch down White Council. But, you know, this guy's got a really, really, really nice formation. Um, probably quite comparable, if not... I would say it's better than mine. 
respect level wise i mean obviously the main denominator for me is my dane so very similar level of dane other comms of sort of higher um definitely more refined in these things so i i would say there that's a good result and i, I get that there is a um there is a, a sort of small unit in there as well but I, I was pretty happy with that as far as it goes and you can see in here that Bjorn's not quite the force that he was before it seems whereas Dane in, in sort of the whale fights has, has stayed pretty consistent so I don't know just a little bit interesting um so that was that obviously he'll have a better white council than me and got more evasion it's just I'm I'm kind of I will have debuffed him quite significantly with his with his damage dealers in in this formation so it sort of evens it out a little bit but i thought that was a good fight um what i have found with the guild formations is if i'm not full i do struggle with them because i can't catch the damage back up throughout rounds three and four um because i'm already half dead so by round five I'm, I'm kind of already behind so this is what i was saying about getting fat and eating donuts so uh this guy it's pretty pretty decent account. So again, Gil running what is now you know considered to be a decent formation. Um, I I personally wouldn't run Swans on Gil, but I probably won't get into that right now. Um, so he's got a decent gun off the white as well. Um, again, Dane's disgusting from his gear perspective. A um, little bit less respect than mine, I suppose. And he's also running Shadow, which again. You know, mine's, I suppose, a slightly higher one. But I was again, I was quite impressed with this result because people have really struggled with him and and the kind of T4 effect. Um, <clears throat> I will just check to see if Shadow hits. So just to show you what, how that works with, with Shadow um, against Gil. So let's just try and... Well, we'll try and get to round one, but apparently we're, we're starting not at round one. So let's find Shadow. It's just to give you really one example of how it is. So, the shadow. Uh, where is he? So much in in the rounds now. It's ridiculous. The shadow. So, uh, protected by Swan Knights, uh, avoids attacks. Yada yada yada. King can avoidance. Okay, fair enough. Now, this is my point. So. If Shadow targets Gil, it's really good because he seems to, because of what they had to do um, to make the skill work, particularly when people have got Swan Knights, once you've hit, you the splash hits everything. So you are stripping White Council, um, which is really good. So what I like about Shadow is he's one of the comms that is... I get... It, it's a really difficult conversation because Gil counters shadows early damage quite significantly so in this fight he's only done 69k but it's it's kind of pushed my my dane up a little bit um so even though he does count a, a shadow in some way it, it allows shadow to counter gill and kind of help your dane do more damage which again with saruman it's the same principle but saruman's hitting probably a little bit harder because he's hitting with focus so the thing I like about Sauron in comparison to Gil is I think he just offers you a little bit more versatility. He's a better tank generally anyway, in my, in my opinion. Um, and you're not restricted into a unit, but also the debuff on these damage comms is, is pretty significant. And, and with people now trying to run shadows where, um, where you're running this as well for focus damage, you know, what's this percentage? So there's 76 focus. Uh, probably a better example if it hit mine the the debuff that um the deceiver not sorry the deceiver that the enemy comes up with by minus 15 percent it's quite significant particularly on the shadows output of damage from black numenorian so it's interesting and it and if my sauron is faster than his gandalf the white which i'm not sure if it was here so 32 plus that so what are you probably doubtful i could probably just have a quick look at the report though just to make sure obviously if you're faster than gandalf the white you also reduce gandalf the white's focus so we'll see where sauron starts acting here uh so 
yeah, so uh, my Sauron acted last, which is not ideal, but it sh it gets rid of the the um, damage dealers, so it, it lowers the damage dealer stats. Just doesn't lower Gan of the White. So that was that fight. Didn't really want to go into these fights it too much. I'm sure if Rooster sees me on a battlefield, he just flies at me. Again, 100k out of Shadow, which I was quite impressed with. This was before I leveled up, so I'd only got nine points in there. Um, again, T4, and I get he's running T2s, but I think from a resource point of view, I was, I was pretty happy with that as well. I mean, his gear is also pretty pretty disgusting, to be honest. Um, yeah, he's got a nice sort of setup. He's Gandalf the White's on the R5, but he is a traditionally evil player, so to get his Dane to uh, Z5 is pretty impressive. Um, but yeah, Rooster's a good guy as well, so again, using Scout... I still I'm not convinced by scale. Like I say, at this level of investment, I feel like at respect to eleven, she should be doing more. Um, so I don't know. That was that fight. So I thought that one was good. Um, and I know people have been saying you can't get the same amount of stuff out of Shadow as you can from something like a Bjorn. But to be honest, I'm I'm finding him to be pretty good. So this was quite a simple fight where he actually out damaged Day, and this is more to do with the fact that there is no. White Council in there or anything like that. So he's just peppering people early. Um, then we ran into another guild formation. And again, you know, it's it's not a bad guild formation by any stretch of the imagination. Um, so, you know, we, we kind of went down to half health, health. And then this report here was actually crazy because this guy has actually got a really... So this is just the counter buff and another thing that really helps. But Shadow hitting for 127k. Um was really good and i think this is just is this where he leveled up i've still got nine points so 127k again this is without gill so it it does affect his damage output but you know pretty respectable formation um so i felt that was a, an insane result really but considering i was half half full so but that is the the unit counter completely there so that was nice uh what other reports we got i think we've got more donuts somewhere uh, this is another girl formation, and again, Shadow hitting for 100k. Dane, you'll notice, is over 140, so it, I just feel he does help him. Um, but it's another nice formation. Like I say, we've been hitting some 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 good sort of comms, really, and some uh, some really good formations. So uh, it's been fun. We've got, been getting a lot of merit. Then we have the unkillable donut. I think this guy is probably going to be known as by me. These swans on his Sildor just do not die. Um, this is quite an interesting fight as far as it goes. But yeah, his, his, his Sildor is absolutely disgusting. He does not die. Um, and I've seen so many fights where his Sildor doesn't die. But again, you know, pretty impressive investment level. Um, you know, that is a better, I mean, Z11 kind of thought, that's a get better formation than me, and, and we've nearly matched up against it. Resource-wise, we've arguably, we've probably won, um, as these two, the cost, but yeah, no, it's it another great fight. Uh, levels I've got on him as well, I suppose, so yeah, the, the Isildur is pretty unkillable, this one, Knights. Uh, what was this one? This is what I was saying about not being full. So if I'm not full, I do struggle with guild formations because I can't get the damage out fast enough. And my tank died early here, to be fair, but I can't get the damage out fast enough. So basically, um, I, I can't catch back up to a guild formation at that point. So if, if I'm full, I do well against them. If I'm not so full, because we beat that player up the top. So um, We've been throwing the second team around like you've seen. I thought this was a reasonable result. Uh, mixing in small units and large units. Again, pretty nice formation as far as it goes. Uh, Shadow with 94k. And that's, uh, yeah, nice formation. So, again, Shadow hitting pretty hard. And this is full focus sort of damage. So, um, interesting one. These three kind of level each other out quite a lot, actually. I see this happen a lot where there's sort of 10k difference between the three. I, I do need to change the way that formation works, though. Um... And then when, when we're full with the main, again, 90k from Shadow, so 150k from Dane, I, I do genuinely think that he helps against these guild formations. Um, 
We've got another one here. I think this one was... It's literally just everything's a gill. I get people are trying to play the gill in there, but uh, this, was a, this was a great report, really, for me, um, looking at the sort of investment level in, in these donut accounts. Another really nice Dane. And then another nice shadow. So, yeah, so I felt that was a good report against the Swans. Uh, I think this is the same guy from up the top. Yeah, it is. So when we're full, we, we do get the win. Still tight, but we do get the win. Um, and that was well out-leveled. And then the last one that I was just going to show again from Shadow doing 112k damage um, was against this formation. And I was pretty happy with this, to be honest, because this guy's got a real disgustingly good formation. So I don't know what his roles are, but he's got extra command as well. Literally disgusting. So Z for um, Gil. Everyone kind of sees these donut people coming and kind of goes, oh, this is going to be painful. But Z16, better roles than me as well. And nice gear set as well, Divide and Conquer. Um, really nice Bjorn. <laughs> and then we've got Gandalf the White, uh, a focus version at Z11. So did he get some command in here? Yeah, he got some command in here as well, so... Uh, really interesting. I, what I will say about this is, of my, I don't even think I'm faster. So again, quicker than me, um, I won't have debuff white council. So that that's a really really strong result. And again, it comes from I think this sort of the way that swans and and shadow work really, which is quite interesting. But that that was kind of what I wanted to show. I, I have been impressed with shadow. This, like I say, his damage has gone up since filling black numenorian. Um, I am tempted to throw on a focus pipe or even a uh, focus pipe and the obsidian dagger, but I feel like I might lose too much attack then. I quite like this threshold of attack. So if I was a higher Z level, I'd probably be tempted because if I could get something like Z8 and I'm at level 5 in here, I'd be I'd be well happy. But that's, that's a long, long way off. Um, so that was kind of all I wanted to show on it. Obviously, there's, there's some crossing attacks going on here. Um, I think it'll be on and off. There's lots of different fights going on. Another Lafar user. Always nice to see a Lafar user. Um, but yeah, nice to see lots of different fights going on. Um, we like Rose Formation. It's pretty cool, to be honest. As far as evil formations go, it's it's pretty cool. And his Lafar is awesome. Um, but that's kind of all I wanted to go through. So... I just wanted to put a little spotlight on, on the formation that I'm currently using. I wasn't massively happy until I've gained a couple of levels, and I, I think that was down to just the points I'd got in Black Numenorian. So I had to kind of persevere with this formation a little bit, where I swapped Bjorn in for a while and didn't feel I was getting the results. And then I swapped Bjorn back out, and then and I put um, put Shadow in, and I've kept him in. And I, and I do think he's done really well for, for what I've wanted him to do. Um and the sort of general level of damage you're getting from the focus is, is really nice. So, As always with these things, try things out for yourself. It's nice to see different formations flying around in the game at the moment um, and different commanders and things changing because of the extra ability points that we've got. So it's, it's nice in, in commanders. So. If in doubt, as always, always follow your nose.